So, you want to make a really cool GUI for your game, but you don't know how to. Well, I'm here to help. So, we're going to use tweens for this. What I've got here is my project. It's just a plain simple one with one scene. This scene is going to be our menu. So you can just make a new scene. You can rename it if you want to. I'm not going to. So we're just going to make an object and we're going to make this a sprite. I'm just going to call it a quit button. BTN stands for button. I'm going to add an animation and I've got my image here. I'm also going to go into behaviors and add a tween behavior. I'm then just going to drag this onto my scene. Also, if you're doing tweens that involve rotation or scaling, like I am, then you want to make sure that the points in your object are where you want the object to rotate around. And so this red one, the origin, is where the sprite will rotate and scale around. So I want that to be here. And I also quite like making these whole numbers. So I would round them up or round them down and just make it whole. So this is 80 and 8. And so now you'll see that it's moved. And this is because the point always goes to the center of these grid lines. And so I'm just going to position it where I want it. Easy peasy. So now it's time for the actual fun part. So make note of the X position because this is what we're going to be changing through the tweening. So this is 192. So I'm going to make a new event and I'm going to go into common conditions for all objects, mouse and touch, and then the cursor slash touch is on an object, quit button. And so now this is what we're going to do to make it move. So I'm going to just see what the X and Y values are in the position that I want it to move to. So the X is 160, the Y is 80. And so I'm going to add an action and I'm going to make this a tween animation. And I'm going to change the position. And I'm going to change the X position. The X is going to be 160, like we noted. The tween identifier is just its name. It's like naming a variable. So I'm just going to call this hover. The easing is how it moves. And so there are lots of these different ones. If you've ever done keyframes and you've made a curve, this is basically the same thing. I'm just going to stick with linear because that's just a straight line and it's just the simplest one to do with. And the duration is measured in milliseconds. So I'm going to have 100 milliseconds, which is a tenth of a second. So now when we play, I'm just going to move it to the normal position. There you go, it moves. But it doesn't go back. And so we want it to go back now. So what we can do is we can just copy and paste this event, right click this and then do invert condition. And so when the cursor is not on the button, it will change the position to something else. And so we just want to get this position that it is in now, 192, and make it that. As you can see now, it works. It's very cool, very smooth. But we want to click it and it do something. So I'm going to make a new sub-event of this. And I'm going to make a new condition, mouse and touch mouse button pressed or touch held and I'm going to do the left button and in the action I'm going to make it get bigger so I'm going to go to tween scale and change an object scale you can change it on the X or the Y or on both which is what I'm going to do the object is quit button the tween identifier I'm just going to call pressed size the scale I'm going to put is 1.2, which will be 1.2 times its size. 1 is just its normal size. So 1.2 times its size. Easing, linear, and then duration I'm going to put as 400. So now you'll see that when we click on the object, it will get bigger to 1.2 times its size and over 0.4 seconds. So I'm also going to make it fade away. So I'm going to make a new tween in the actions. Go to opacity and then change object opacity tween. Quit button. I'm going to call this pressed opacity. To opacity, I'm going to put zero. Easing, linear, duration. 
I'm going to put this as the same as the scaling one, just to make it consistent. So you can see now that when I click, there you go, it's gone. Though the actual object is still there, you just can't see it. And so we want to delete it when we've clicked on it. So we can do that by making a new event and drag it to the top. And then we want to search for if the opacity of an object is at a certain level. So sprite opacity, quit button is equal to zero. And if this doesn't work, then you can just use less than or equal to and then one if that doesn't work. So now we can do equal to, okay. And now this is where you can put delete the object. And you can also change the scene. So if I wanted to quit the game, I could click quit the game. And so now if we play it and we click on it, you'll see that the animation will play and we will quit the game. There you go. That's as easy as it is. You can then add a fade after it and tons of other stuff. So I hope this helped you. Have fun making super cool user interfaces. Mm -hmm.